Josh, wh why are you looking under your cups like that? Secret messages, Nicole. There's secret messages under every in and out cup, and if I read enough of them, I can finally find the buried treasure from in and out founder Harry Snyder. You gotta join me in the quest. Sorry, I have plans after this. That's oh, just another Bible verse. This, this is, is a, a hot, hot dog, dog is a sandwich. sandwich. Ketchup is a smoothie. Yeah, I put ice in my cereal, so what? That makes no sense. A hot dog is a sandwich. A hot dog is a sandwich. <laughs> what? <laughs> Welcome to our podcast, A Hot Dog is a Sandwich. I'm your host, Josh Sher. And I'm your host, Nicole Anaiti. And we're internet chefs over at Good Mythical Morning and the Mythical Kitchen Channels when we're not cooking up fancy in and out hamburgers. Nicole, we are right here breaking down the world's biggest food debates. Wow, Josh, that's so true. So true, King. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you say that? So true, King. God, I, hate, I hate the way that the Zillennials have made us all speak. I know, it's horrible. Oh, it's horrific. Uh, well, uh, the, the whole thing, this whole podcast is about uh, in and out versus Shake Shack. Can I tell you something? Do you have to? It feels like apples to oranges. I'm going to be honest with you. What do you, you? mean apples to, apples to oranges? No, this is like a honey crisp apple to sugar bee apple. Do no. people recognize those apples or am I, I just? Do. I'm no, like, I, I recognize those apples. Yeah, but we're apple hype beasts. No, Not you're an apple hype beast. <laughs> I'm through osmosis an apple fan. Yeah, it's like how I only know what sneakers exist because of V. Yeah, it's people exactly People only know the same. what apples exist because of me. Bro, I was in Whole Foods the day the Cosmic Crisp apple dropped. Wow. I've been following that marketing plan. Freaking <laughs> Pullman, Washington, dude. 30 <laughs> mil behind the marketing machine on that. Huge. Worked on it for like 20 years. Crossbreed between the Honeycrisp and the Enterprise. Anyways, the point is, these are very similar products that can absolutely be compared, and they're very similar for a lot of reasons. They're different for a lot of reasons. They're different for a lot of reasons. But so are apples. But these, but these, these guys. I don't feel like it's fair. I feel like you're you're judging a burger joint over like a fast casual restaurant. Can we compare apples and oranges? I feel like you can. Yeah. That's been such an idiomatic I, expression. I'm a fan of comparing apples, apples to are oranges. better. Oranges are better. You have to peel an what? orange. You have to peel they an orange. Better. They taste better, but you have to peel. But that's the point. So what it comes as we can have. The point is skin. we can have an efficacious debate despite the fact that they're different. I th okay, right? that's fair. Fair. <laughs> we can have an efficacious debate yes, right here. Let's get efficacious. So the reason I love talking about Shake Shack versus In and Out is. Because they have really similar, not backgrounds, because no. In N Out was founded in 1948, yeah. Baldwin Hills. Like, it's a contemporary of McDonald's. Totally. But the fact that people even think to compare it to Shake Shack speaks to how tight they were with their branding, their expansion method, mm -hmm. all that type of stuff. Yeah. The reason I say they're a little bit similar is because In N Out is the ultimate West Coast burger. Absolutely. They did not open an In N Out location outside of the Los Angeles metropolitan area until 1990. Which 42 is crazy. Years. Which is which is absolutely crazy to me. They had yeah. no they had no desire to do so. They just couldn't find the demand. What was it? Uh, they were very very protective about their quality yeah. and their brand. So In N Out has a lot of protections around. Totally. Some people, it's like the Trader Joe's effect. Where they mm -hmm. make a really good product and they're mm -hmm. small enough to where people are like, this is healthy. All Trader Joe's things are organic. I had somebody tell me, they're like, well, In-N-Out only uses organic products. False. <laughs> Not true at all. You can't make an organic hamburger for like three, you know, $2.79. Impossible. Impossible. But they do enough good things to make people think that, right? Sure. So all their produce comes from within 24 hours. I will say their produce is some of the best produce the on a burger. Best. Yeah, I will say. The crunch you, is undeniable. Mm, crunchy, cold yeah. lettuce. Yeah. The onions are always 100%. just like beautifully crisp. The yeah. tomatoes are always red. They're and always ripe. red. It's yeah. right. It's not. You go to a Burger King or a mass market fast food chain, and you're getting like that white tomato that's just mushy. Yeah, and that's that never no happens. Flavor. That never happens here. They're always pretty well constructed, and that's because they have like very, very strict training methodologies. Which I love. Same. They yeah. pay their man. Their managers are all making six figures. I believe that's a real yeah, statistic. Yeah, I think that I read. so. I think the majority of them do. A majority yeah. of them. Um. So In and Out has a very, very strong corporate culture, and that's why I, I actually want to get an In and Out tattoo because I respect. Oh, wow. The fact that they did not outkick their coverage, right? Do you think you can get free in and out with an in and out tattoo? Is that why you're doing it? I'm guessing not because <laughs> in the intro we talked about the Bible verses. There's a Bible verse. I don't know. Is it the same one on the bottom of every in and out cup? I don't know. Is there one down here? Proverbs 3 5. I think it was. So it's still a family owned company, the Snyder family. Lindsay yeah. Snyder, I believe, is their current president. Uh -huh. um, and they have a very, very strong, I believe, born again Christian. Uh, background. So I don't know if tattoos are like chill with the born again Christian community. I don't know if they're like the cool youth pastors that have like a tattoo of a cross or I know a weird amount of Christians that have Hebrew tattoos. Yeah, me too. Do you, do you want to know <laughs> what Proverbs, Proverbs 3, 5 is? I would love to. What is it? Okay. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. What does that mean? Nicole, lean not on your own understanding, for all the understanding you need is contained within the animal style French fries, now available for $3.49 at your local In N Out location. Well, how do you feel about Shake Shack? 
So Shake Shack, on the other hand, to me, is the ultimate East Coast burger. Yeah, this is just Biggie versus Tupac is what you're trying this to say. This is Biggie say. versus yeah, Tupac, yeah, but totally. this is like if Tupac were like uh, a 65-year-old man. Okay. You know what I mean? Because In-N-Out is so much older than Shake Shack. Shake Shack started as a hot dog cart in 2001. That's right, by Danny Meyer. Danny Meyer, yeah. who was, what is it, Union Square Hospitality. Union Square Cafe was his like first flagship, I believe, yeah. Yeah, he, uh, Danny Meyer is a restaurateur who has yeah. written books about the industry. He's Big kind Pimpin'. Of, Big yeah. Pimpin', right? Like, he's considered yeah. the preeminent sort of godfather of modern hospitality. Yes. Um, and Shake Shack is now his real, real moneymaker. Mm-hmm. Uh, started as a hot dog cart in 2001, 2004, they opened the full service restaurant. Um, and then eventually in 2010, they would open their first one outside of New York City. That's awesome. In Miami. And then now Shake Shack is, it's becoming like the fancy mall burger. Yeah, I always get, uh, I try to get Shake Shack whenever I go to the airport. If there's a Shake Shack in an airport, I'm going to get it. Yeah, it's a great. In comparison to anything else. Yeah. There's actually a really good article, just to diverge real That's quick. Okay. There's a really cool article <laughs> about all these restaurants that we think are cool mm. are now just becoming mall restaurants. Oh. Like, like Shake like Shake Shack's a great example. Okay. Our kids are going to think Shake Shack is so stupid. Oh, because I they're like, so. that's just a crappy mall. Like, they're going to view Shake Shack as we view Sabaro. Sabaro? I knew you were going to think of Sabaro. <laughs> 100%. I'm a Sabaro fan, though. I, at some point, Sab- yeah. I mean, it's perfectly fine. Yeah. Um, at some point, Sabaro is probably cool, maybe. I don't know. I'm just I saying think Sabaro, that. Sabaro, I mean, when you- Orange when you, Julius Cinnabon's a great example, Cinnabon, too. Cinnabon, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, a Wetzel's right. pretzel. That yeah. used to be exciting, and now you're like, oh, Ugh. God, they've just been sitting there for nine hours, yeah. and I'm going to get Cinnabon. the <laughs> I'm gonna get the pepperoni grease from the, the pizza pretzel on the Zara clothes, Yeah. You know, and feel like the Zara employees already hate me so I'm just not you know I will say one thing I will say one thing these guys the In-N-Out guys they do burgers really really well but the Shake Shacks do burgers a little bit less well but they do other things just as good but if you is a burger joint what is more important to you the burger or anything else but the thing is like no actually when how much do you weight it like do I wait what what percentage of your enjoyment of In-N-Out or Shake Shack is dependent on how good the burger is like try and put a number on it uh, like a 7.5. So 75% of your enjoyment is the burger. And then yeah. you're getting, let's say, 19% from fries, 6% from... A drink. I don't do milkshakes. I'm not a big milkshake person. I'm I, lactose intolerant. I just, I don't understand milkshakes like with a meal. Like I yeah. love milkshakes as like a midday treat standalone. <laughs> yeah. With like, with like meat. Yeah. It's, makes me want to vomit. Weird. It's really weird. The thought of eating it together makes me want to vomit. Unless I'm at Johnny Rockets, then I'm like, ah, oh, I'm from the 50s. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Should have done a whole podcast about Johnny Rockets. We will, we will. One it day. is the greatest restaurant yeah, yeah. in the world. I, oh, don't get me started about Johnny Rockets. And my I metalhead love... brother worked there. Ew. With just the long, greasy metalhead hair. Ew. I'm not saying you that he worked he at silly. Johnny Rockets. You no, told me the long gross. hair story, and I knew you were going to talk about oh, it. I'm like, it was oh. had its own ecosystem inside ah, of it. Stop it. Um, and oh, and under the paper hat, What's it's up? just sweat. <laughs> Gross. Okay. No hair in it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Getting in the food. Oh, chili cheese fries. A lot of room to trap hair in there. Okay, so 75% of your enjoyment <laughs> is the burger. Yes. Then, like, does it really matter that much if in and outs fries suck? No, I, I don't care about the fries. And I always get my fries well done. Same. And some people get them, like, David gets them light well. But for me, the fries aren't the, the star. The burger is the star. And I respect the fact that the burger is the star of the burger joint. But I, again, I'm saying this is, it's not fair to compare them 100% because Shake Shack has so many other things. They have chicken, they have hot dogs, they have tons of stuff in there. What, what are you doing? Oh. That's a hamburger. Look at the side. Look that's at the side. Hamb- there's all oh, the, the side. Yeah, but they're very small. The hamburger so is literally nine times bigger than each of the small that. things. That I get that. They're get staking that. their name on their burger. It's got to be a better burger than In-N-Out to me to be compared. Like the fries are whatever. L- let's talk about fries. Okay. Let's get this out of the way. Okay. It, are In-N-Out's fries good? No. no. Do communion wafers taste good? No. But you're eating God in both. Um, and I, that's the point. I closed my laptop. Well, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Do you want to eat here. each fry and compare, or is it not worth it? Eating? I already know it, but yeah, I'll eat the fries. I'll okay. eat the fries. Nicole. Okay. Can, can you give you? me one of the in, the Shake Shack fries? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Shake Shack fries are better. Frozen, crinkle cut, on a bias. It's good. People love these. It's so wait. This is a good fry. It's a good fry. It's They're not my favorite. Intentionally nostalgia mongering with yeah. the crinkle cut. Yeah. You know, and then In and Out. I respect the. I don't like the fries, but I respect the fries. The fries are it's good like Tom Brady. The- I hate Tom Brady. But I respect him. I don't care about sports. I don't know how many times I have to shove it in your face. I don't care about sports even for one moment. I don't know, like Celine Dion. No, who's a good I Tom love Brady? Celine of... Dion. <laughs> Celine Dion. Um, it's a Dion, not Dion. 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 Celine Dion. Celine Dion. Okay. <laughs> now I Quebecois will say Quebecois is the ugliest language the... in the world. Go ahead. What is Quebecois? 
Oh, is that Canadian French? Mm. It's the ugliest language in the world. Have you ever heard King of the Hill dubbed in Quebecois? I'm sorry. No, obviously oh my God. not, Josh. No, you would. We have seen the same viral videos. No, we haven't. I'll show you, I'll show you uh, Quebecois King of the Hill okay, after the fine, show. Okay, fine, fine, fine. <laughs> Let me tell you. I agree with you on the In-N-Out French fry front, but this, the, the In-N-Out animal style fries are better than the cheese fries. Yeah, wait, that's Do a great point. Do you agree? <laughs> that's a great point, 100%. All right, so yeah. in, In-N-Out fries. Give me an In-N-Out fry. Oh, okay. Or is that? Give me a little handful. So these are frozen pre-bagged fries that they are just dropping yeah. in a fryer, right? Which is a pretty good way to make fries. It's even, the best way to make fries. Even from a cul- like an actual culinary perspective. Yeah, frozen to fry, do it. You get it. the steam in the middle, you get that, you get the, the crust on the outside mm-hmm. when you fry it at a high temperature. In and out fries are pound for pound the worst fries in the game, mm-hmm. but it's for a sacrificial reason that I respect because they cook all of them fresh. What they do, they take a whole mm-hmm. ass potato, Nicole, they put it in like a potato crusher. It's incredible. That batonniers the potatoes right it's into incredible. the oil. They are showing you. They're putting their entire heart on their sleeve. They're saying, we are doing this fresh. We know this is not going to create the best product. We know it is not the most efficient, but, but we, we want, want to you, show you to know where your potatoes are coming from, how they are being fried, and that is the in and out ethos. It is the sacrificial <laughs> lamb, Agnes Day, for their Christian in and out born again hearts, Nicole, that lets you know you are in good hands. Yeah, but it's just a performance. It's performance art. <laughs> yeah, it's like a TSA. Yeah. Oh, damn it. But what's the point? God, like, these fries suck. They're really bad fries. <laughs> like, like they are bad fries. But what's the what is the the, the performative nature of of slicing the fries in front of us? Doesn't do anything for me. Really? I could have. I could totally. If they did the same thing, froze them, and then did them later, I would respect them more because they're giving me a better product. Oh, that's smart. So you see them slicing it out front. So like you know the yeah. grandmas who want to go in and feel good about how they're doing it the old school way. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But then you're flying in the stuff in the back. You know who does that? Who? There's a restaurant that does that. Um, in Austin, Texas, there's a very famous barbecue restaurant called... The Salt Lick. The Salt Lick. The Salt Lick. You go into the Salt Lick, it's like the Disneyland of barbecue. Started off as a small, legit, open pit operation, but now it seats like 9 million people, and everyone's <laughs> yeah. just hammered drunk outside, including this guy yeah. playing horseshoes and, and, and uh, right. cornhole. But they have this big open pit that you see all the meat hanging from. That's like 2% of the meat that the restaurant serves. Yeah. The rest of it is being smoked in an off-site factory. That's what I'm saying. Getting trucked in and they're hacking it up. That's the way to do it. I understand that In-N-Out has integrity and that they want to show that they're doing things fresh and in uh, front of you. Uh, but what's the point? Uh, like, if people are going to have responses uh, like that and, like, you know, if, if you're just going to get constantly, like, poo-pooed on <laughs> because your fries are right, how about you show people that you are doing it, but you're just going to, you know, save it for later? Damn. That's what I would do. I would come in to in and out and I would tell them to do that. And I'd be like, your product will be better. And people will stop saying your fries suck. Neither of us are necessarily marketing professionals. But, but we could be. <laughs> and we're also the smartest people I've ever met. You really think so? What do you think the benefits or drawbacks would be of in and out say, doing that, slicing potatoes fresh, but then freezing them and frying them to actually make good fries? I think it's the best idea in the world. Because, it, I mean, headlines galore, right? Yeah. Everybody would write about that. They get millions upon billions of impressions. Yeah. But that is also the first level of the decline of the Roman Empire. Stop it. No, I'm saying that's well, the slippery well, slope that you run. Well, let me tell you, they've already changed the chilies. I don't they know have? if you know about this. They used to have these beautiful full chilies, the pepperoncinos. They were tiny. They were delicious. And now they're sliced. <laughs> they're sliced. It angers me on like another level. Yeah. I want to just bite. I want to bite the chili and I want to put the juice on the French fries. And that's really yummy oh, to me. I love the way those chilies explode in your mouth. Yeah, but I can't do it anymore. So they've taken that away from me. So what they should do instead is just buy another freezer at every single freaking in and out and then just make the potatoes better and then bring back the chilies, please. The cracks in the wall have already started. I know. All right, let's talk about let's talk about the burger. So in and out burger, uh, it is like a <laughs> it's just like a white hamburger bun. It's toasted very, very well. You, I get my bun well done. I, I never ask for it. I just, oh. I don't have like a complicated in and out order. You don't? What is I it? I kind of do. Uh, so I actually prefer a single cheeseburger. Um, and I go onions two ways, which means grilled and raw. Okay. Uh, sometimes I used to go whole grilled and I used to add chopped chilies. But now it's simple cheeseburger, onions two ways, boom. If I'm really feeling frisky, I'll get animal fries. Yeah. And then I'll get a Diet Coke and put a splash of pink lemonade in there. Nice. Um, and that's my move. And I got a side of ketchup and a side of spread, which is a Thousand Island. And Love spread. Actually, I was going to say it's the best in the game. Shake Shack's 
version of Thousand Island is better. It's, honestly, it's really good. It is better. But again, they had 42 more years to practice. Yeah, that's true. That's true. They, that's true. they in and out ran so Shake Shack could run slightly faster. Yeah, no, let me tell you. No, no, no. Let me tell you. in and out uh, they bring like, hot, they still innovate. You know, they had the hot chocolate launch. That was a big deal. And people love the hot chocolate. <laughs> Forgot about that. Yeah, and if you're a kid, you get it for free. Did what you know a, that? There's no worse drink in the world with a hamburger than a hot chocolate. Yeah, what about a milkshake? <laughs> Milkshake's better because at least it's cold. It's for the kids. It's for the kids. Mic- okay, yeah. The it's for the kids, it. the kids when it's it. cold outside. I get it. And and I've, but, I've been through the drive-thru to get a milkshake or get a hot chocolate after the beach. I will say that the buns at, at uh, a Shake Shack, stop eating the fries. Oh, I will say the buns at Shake Shack are phenomenal. They're squishy. They're soft. Are they Martin's potato rolls? They're Martin's potato rolls. I knew it. I knew so it. So you have like, let's go, let's go bun for bun. Okay. So a well-toasted normal ass white hamburger normal bun. Normal ass bun. That is split into two pieces, right? That's because right. Uh, Shake Shack does the opposite. Hinge. Martin's potato rolls, lightly toasted. Hinge bun at the back, which I don't <laughs> think I enjoy. Oh. The paper's the hinge and the bun. Um, I kind of respect it because when you eat, it pushes down. Yeah. So I kind of like the fact that it's hinged. But then you get the burger that's like sticking out like a tongue and I don't It doesn't like that. do that. No, because they front load it. That's not true. They front load it. It's over Let's there. Let's see this. Let's see this damn thing. Let's look at it. Don't you see it's front loaded? It's loaded in the front. <laughs> what the hell is this? What the hell is it's this? It's front shit? loaded. What do you mean front loaded? I don't want front loaded. I want the bun to to be symmetrical. You're asking too much. What do you mean asking too much? In and out does it? That's not where it is. <laughs> 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 like this to me is is so much more pleasant. It is. It is more pleasant. I you know understand. What I, mean? I understand where you're coming from. Yeah. But uh, come on. I like <laughs> I like the bun more. I like the bun. So you're getting a softer, cakier bun at Shake Shack. Yeah. Here, it's a little bit crustier, and yeah. especially with the hard toast. I don't love Martin's potato rolls, and it has nothing to do with their bad politics. I do. Um, because, oh, I, because they're bad politics? No, no, I, like the, I don't even know what their politics are. I just like their bread. I think they just support uh, conservative candidates because they're a big business, oh, and that's what I'm businesses sorry. do. Oh, sorry. Does it um, in do that, too? Yeah, definitely. Of course. So, Every What big businesses are going to support the lack of regulations. Exactly. That's welcome to the, how the world works. Um, but anyways, I don't love the cakiness of it. To me, it's too sweet. Mm. Like, I love a good King's Hawaiian roll, but when it comes to a burger, I want a neutral bun and I want it well toasted. Okay. I give the advantage to in and out but I understand if people don't. And I think most people wouldn't. How about the meat quality? Meat quality, in and out I believe, gets most of the meat from Harris Ranch. I think Shake Shack, Shake Shack has better meat. <laughs> Shake Shack has better meat. So Shake Shack is a proper smash burger. Proper. Burgers are a quarter pound. At in and out burgers are an eighth of a pound. Mm. Pounds to ever. You get a double double. It's still significantly cheaper than a totally. Shake Shack burger. Totally. And you're getting two pieces of cheese because that's what In and Out's known for, right? Is a double double. Yeah. Like the burgers are still nice and crusty, but it's not like a smash burger. You're not forcing the Maillard no, reaction. No, 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 no. But then you get the two slices of cheese that steam from the burger meat in there. It's but meat, as far as meat quality goes, Shake Shack, I think, has the edge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But as a whole burger experience, what do you think is the better burger experience as a whole? I unequip Nicole. I am wearing. An athletic wear beanie. I am wearing a t-shirt from an all-girl indie band. I am wearing vans with no socks. I'm a Southern California man through and through, Nicole. I will die before I pledge allegiance to Shake Shack over in and out I'm the same. I think In-N-Out is the most incredible burger. But I do respect Shake Shack for having really good chicken options. Have you ever had chicken <laughs> options? What the hell are we talking about? Chicken have options ever, and a burger bag? Have you ever had their little chicken nuggets? They're so good. As somebody who grew up with a lot of Indian Americans near a lot of In and Outs, I will tell you, In and Out is the best place for a vegetarian. And you'll say they do not have any vegetarian options on the menu. <sighs> But they do. They the grilled cheese. The grilled cheese. I love the grilled cheese. You I get grew a grilled up on the grilled cheese. cheese, Josh. I'm trying to make Shake Shack feel wanted. You I need it. You stuff the French fries in the grilled oh cheese. God. That's called monkey style. There right? ain't chicken. No, that was the th- okay. So it is called monkey style, but that was the thing but that Food real. Beast made up. It was fake. Yeah, shout out to Eli. Thanks a lot, Eli. You liar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they actually got a lot of hate for that. Oh, they I'm were sorry. like, you're supposed to be journalists, and he was like, I don't know. I'm it's just called, having, it's I'm called Food Beast. I'm literally just vibing. Um, condiments. Shake Shack sauce is a little bit better, but nah. I want to talk about chicken. Why are you talking about chicken? I like, about the, chicken. Chicken. About chicken. I like the chicken at Shake Shack. I think it's inconsistent. Sandwiches. It's white meat. It should be dark meat. And it's it's hard to cook white meat consistently the unless batter? unless you are processing it the really batter? hard. Let me speak. Speak, speak. The speak. batter on the speak. chicken is phenomenal, and the fact that you can get it at the same place you can get a burger is great because it gives people options if they don't eat red meat. And I think it's really yummy. Are you drinking milkshakes without me? Oh, it's so stupid how much better Shake Shack yeah. is. Oh, my God. I will say oh. Shake Shack's 
Shake Shack's Holy milkshake crap. game is bar none. No, not even Johnny Rockets can hold a candle. I will have a sippy sip. Oh, shoot. Um, that. It's more yellow in and out. As somebody who has an incredibly high tolerance for chemicals in food, <laughs> whatever is in the in and out milkshake oh my God. freaks me the hell out because it oh melts God. thick and warm. Melted ice cream should not be that thick. It should, when, when ice cream melts, the texture should change. It does not change in this, only the temperature. It stays thick. It's just, there's so, I don't know the ingredients in it. I would be willing to guess there's a bunch of guar gum, xanthan gum, all For that. Sure. And it's not from an ethical perspective or a health perspective that I give a flying SHI double hockey sticks. It just, to me, tastes really bad. I, oh, God. It's a bit melted because we're under the lights and doing a podcast. Can I tell you the truth? Yeah. That Shake Shack milkshake was like the most positive endorphins I've had in like a month. Same. Oh, <laughs> my God. So oh, my God. Are you just is there smi- so, there's like salt in there? Yeah. I mean, Are you smiling from the inside? a vanilla milkshake. I'm smiling from the inside. never tasted anything that good in my life. Oh, my God. What the hell? I want to bathe in it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's oh see. Shoot. Do you want to eat this hamburger? Yeah. You go first. There, okay. Go first. I right. will say their tomatoes are always smaller. At Produce, Shake Shack. green leaf lettuce, ass. Yeah. Bad, bad burger yeah, lettuce. Yeah, ass. It's a bad burger It is lettuce. ass lettuce. Number 15. <laughs> <laughs> burger ass King lettuce. foot lettuce. <laughs> Let me get it. Um, uh, no, it's pretty good. It's pretty. Yeah, it is good. I know it's good. I make a good hamburger. <laughs> Yum. Delicious. I mean, it's delicious. I'm about to say something that I'll probably regret and is very controversial. Let it, let it, let it fly, Joshy. The point of a hamburger is not the meat. It's the, the meat whole experience. could be almost anything. It's the whole experience. Hamburgers are meant to be made with like crappy beef, right? I agree. Of course. The beef is there to be like a little bit of sustenance. Yeah. You even look at like, what is it, the Mississippi Slug Burger? Is that the, which one is that? It's like 30% beef, 70% cornmeal made during the Great Depression. Oh, yes. I saw Emmy Made in Japan made it. Yeah, Emmy yeah, Made in yeah. Japan made it. Um, Really cool history behind it. But the point is like, this to me is is almost too high of a beef to other things ratio. I understand exactly what you're saying, and I'm kind. I need to taste the in and out to confirm. And I'll eat like a no produce burger, of course. Like I still love just a plain totally. like cheese, meat, sauce, totally. pickle, whatever. And that's like a really popular format right now. But for a fast food burger, like, bro, I want the double lettuce. I want the crunch. I w- or I want the double Take tomato. I want the the double. The double Take a lettuce, bite. you know what I mean? No, like, I, I want it to ooze sauce like this. Yeah, I get it. I totally you know, get it. It's exciting for me. It is. It's it's a better looking oh. burger for sure. It's also a better experience, I feel like. Also, there's nothing like going to In and Out. Like it's like, you know, mm. it's like eleven PM, you're out partying with the homies. Mm. You find the, the little swoosh. Mm. Life makes sense. Mm. I'm writhing in my own pleasure like a character in an Anne Rice romance novel. Shout out to anyone who gets that reference. I went through an Anne Rice phase. I was on the back of Fifty Shades, and I was like, you know. It is good. And Anne Rice actually came out in support of uh, E.L. James. For a lot of the- it is a really like, good eating experience. Remember the back. Does that change your perspective at all? I love in and out so much. Do we, do we have to, like, really uncover our own biases here? Please wipe your mouth, Josh. Maggie, please wipe your fingers for typing that. How dare you? I'm go I like how I wiped it right before I go back in. I am finding myself leaning oh. towards Josh. Be civil. Oh yeah. What the heck I'm talking about? I find myself reaching for the Shake Shack burger more because it tastes more burgery. What do you mean more burgery? Let's, let's unpack that. Let's unpack that. What, is, what does burgery mean to you? I can taste the meat and cheese are married in a very delicious way. To me, it's not about the meat and cheese marriage. To me, to me, a burger is not a monogamous relationship. It's a big polyamorous, it's a big polycule, right? Maybe the pickles are coming to play today. It's a polyamorous FS. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe there's sauce. Because even like, we got this animal style. I don't even normally get animal style. but I think I, request, so many, I requested an animal style. Let me throw this out there. Let uh-huh. me throw this equation out there. Oh, so, yeah, good, good call, Maggie. Maggie, you can just, like, say stuff, too, if you want to. You don't have to. Maggie's shy. <laughs> Animal style, for those of you who don't know, it is the secret menu of In-N-Out, which is not secret at all. And, in fact, In-N-Out does own a de facto copyright because they once sued a place called Cali Burger for using the term Animal Yo, style. I remember that place. Yeah, Cali Burger. So there's this Chinese In-N-Out knockoff, and they once threatened to sue me for calling me a Chinese or for calling him a Chinese In-N-Out knockoff. So hopefully they don't do that again. 
Um, weird spot. But anywho, <laughs> you go to in and out you get an animal style burger. They are mustard frying the patties, mm-hmm. which means they smear mustard on it, and they fry off the patties, which I don't really necessarily need. Um, you got pickles on it. They normally don't put pickles on their burgers, which is kind of strange, but whatever. And then you get extra spread, which is their Thousand Island sauce. I don't get animal style burgers. I love pickles on a burger normally, but not an in and out Because to me, the spread offers enough acid with the chopped pickles in there. I get extra pickles. Really? I am. An, you want to know my in and out order? Yes. Cheeseburger, animal style, bun well done, extra pickles, extra sauce. Wait, wait, wait. Run about, run about, run about. Cheeseburger, animal style. Bun well done, extra pickles, extra sauce. Animal style is already extra pickles and extra I sauce. want both. <laughs> I want more. I will say, the, I will say, you were talking about vegetarianism? Yeah. Shake Shack has a shroom burger. The shroom burger's bad. Yeah. They take a whole portobello mushroom, and this is this is, is the bad. risky run. It is When you bad. stick your neck out like that, this is the reason I love in and out They're not trying to change anything, right? Like, they are sticking to their core competencies, and that's why I love them. That's why I want the tattoo. What? I'm eating a pickle while you're speaking, and I don't want it to mar your words. <laughs> your Shake Shack, you want to offer a vegetarian option. You take a whole portobello mushroom cap. I don't doubt that the first person in their test kitchen who made this made, did a good job of it. But when you're I just, see. like, frying a whole portobello mushroom cap, yeah, you don't know how dirty the mushrooms are. You don't know if you're expanded so fast that you don't know how well your employees are cleaning the mushrooms. Gills? You don't know if they've they got gills on the mushrooms. You can't quality control when you have so many different kinds of produce coming in. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then every mushroom burger that I've had there has been just tough and leathery. It's weird. And watery. Yeah, it's weird. And it's bad. Yeah. And that is, to me, the downfall of Shake Shack. And they've, they've expanded so fast. They're in all these freaking malls. They're in airports. Corporate restaurants don't even control their airport locations. That's crazy to me. They're run by a separate company inside the airport. You're effectively doing a licensing deal. That's wild. You know? And so for me, like, that is what I love about In-N-Out. It is the consistency. Yeah. All In-N-Out burgers I've ever had have been within like a 10 percentile range of how good they are, how well they are made, how proportional, Fair. how fresh. Fair. All this Shake Shack, That's I've gotten really wildly good. different experiences. That's true. I think consistency-wise, In-N-Out definitely beats them out. But I find myself eating the fries at Shake Shack more, drinking the milkshake at Shake Shack more, even kind of liking the burger a little bit more. Maybe it's just the way I'm eating it right now. I find the burger so much more of an attractive burger eating experience. Is it because know. it's younger? No. Younger and sexier? Leo DiCaprio, huh? No, I have, listen, Is that why you like Shake Shack better? I love I love old people. <laughs> I think old people are hot. You actually, wait, who's the hottest old person? I can't tell you. What, whisper it. I can't tell you. Why? You're going to judge me. You always judge Is me. Is it the guy from the Dos Equis commercials? <laughs> no, but he's I think he's the hottest second. old guy. He's a close second. The Gordon's Fisherman? My first crush ever on a man was Clint Eastwood. <laughs> He's hot, and he used to be really handsome when he was like not Very handsome. when he was like not Very intense. like an old man, <laughs> like too old. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Whatever. This podcast is going into a weird direction. <laughs> I like In and Out as a whole more, but I am finding Shake Shack's products individually to be quite delicious and quite enjoyable. But I love In and Out, and I always love In and Out. You cannot separate from the Gestalt. Josh, if we bring up Gestalt, one I will more time, bring up the Gestalt. I'm walking away. Every time I shall bring up the Gestalt. Please don't yell at me in a German accent. <laughs> Generational trauma from that. I'm no, not let's even. Talk about, let's talk about ambiance. Let's talk about ambiance. You walk into a Shake Shack. You walk in, in, and, in out. and out. Where are you happier? In and out. Why are you happier in and out? I don't know. Break it down, Nicole. You are have... walking in, in and out. You see all the booze there. You're seeing the red and Ugh. the yellow and the white. This milkshake is versus so good. versus. I'm gonna slide that milkshake. Oh, it's so good. Versus Shake Shack, it feels like you're in a weird yeah. corporate influencer dentist office. I will say that. I will say the ambiance at In and Out very different. Also, the service at In and Out is bar none. Bar none. I love the service at In and Out. I'm not a drive through guy. I hate going through drive throughs. Mm-hmm. I love eating inside fast food restaurants because okay, I love nice. great service. Shout you out were... to the dude at the Arby's in Laguna Hills. You who really remember. Me of my brothers in so many ways. It's so funny. Yeah, me and your me. brother are the same person. <laughs> it's so funny. I remember when we were, we were talking at like uh, at Rosh Hashanah, and uh-huh. it was just like it was like the same person. Was it like, like I was looking into a, a mirror. Persian mirror? Yeah, straight up. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like a the little safari like reflector pad. Oh my god! Yeah, he's the same way. There's something about eating fast food in a fast food restaurant that hits in a very very specific way. I agree that when you're divorcing the products from their location and their environment, yeah. I think pound for pound, Shake Shack wins on taste. Yes. That is not why 
we go to restaurants and that is not why we eat food. That is not the yeah. only thing that comes into our decision making. And I understand that we're biased as West Coasters. And I'm going to preempt this because every single I die. person <laughs> that is not from California is going to go, oh, I went to California once and had one in and out and it sucks. And I'm interesting for disliking the thing that you like. And I do that with many things as well. Whataburger, I think, is absolutely trash. And I think these regional rivalries that mean nothing are part of the spice of life. Right. That's Some right. might say it's strange nationalistic pride. All I say is this is a fantastic hamburger, and I think objectively they do a fantastic job at a lot of things, and they make me incredibly happy, make a lot of people incredibly happy. How do you feel about Culver's? Cut! Butter, baby! Build a better burger with the help of the sport team. Yeah, they created a destination where you can find all their burger-related rankings right in one place. Head to spork.com to read it now. All right, Nicole, we've heard what you and I have to say. <laughs> now it's time to find out what other wacky ideas are rattling out there in the universe. It's time for a segment we call... Opinions Opin- are like casseroles. Yeah, we do call it that. All right, let's listen to our first one. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Josh and Nicole, this is Will. Love the podcast. Um, My opinion is one that has actually gotten into a bit of a thing with me and my fiance is Ugh. that um, I believe eggs belong in macaroni and cheese. Okay. Now, hmm. what I'm saying is you boil the noodles, you get out a baking sheet, you put the noodles in there, you make an egg and cheese mixture, you whip I it understand. up. You also put some cheese in with the noodles, that's why they have bear cheese on it too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then you pour the egg mixture into the baking pan with the mac mm. and che- with the macaroni. And you bake that off. Mm -hmm. You can top it with breadcrumbs and Parmesan cheese for a little crunchy top if you want. You bake it until the top of the macaroni gets crunchy, so you get some crunch in there. You have the ooey gooeyness of the cooked egg with cheese, and it's just so good. My fiancé does not agree that egg belongs in macaroni and cheese. Can you please tell her how I am correct? Hi. You're not objectively correct, but there is like historical yeah. precedent for what you're saying. That's and this very this true. is a big debate among a lot of people. Yeah. I'm looking something up right now, Nicole, you go. Um so uh, there's a lot of recipes that whenever you're using evaporated milk, you use the eggs to help thicken and the cheese mm. also thickens. So it makes sense that you would do that, but um I don't love putting eggs in my mac and cheese, but that's just me. If it gives you a really good mac and cheese and you don't taste any eggy flavor, I say go for it. To me, the eggs are used as a texture thing to yeah. make it more of a solid brick. So you can cut it. So not necessarily so you can cut it, just so it like it comes out easier. You don't get like the the runniness of the cheese. And a lot of people don't get that if you're baking, yeah, if you're if making you're baking, a roux, if you're yeah, doing that. Totally. But I do, to me, they're two completely different experiences and it all comes down to taste, right? Totally. De gustibus non est disputandum. There's no accounting don't for taste, disp- Nicole. Don't despite my tastes. <laughs> God dang right. <laughs> I'm thinking about um, a lot of Caribbean countries. They have a thing called macaroni, macaroni pie. pie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, shout out Rashida Holmes of Bridgetown Roti uh, for making macaroni pie. And it is like, completely a brick you slice it yeah yeah and it's just this dense cheesy chewy delightful experience and that comes from the eggs making Mm -hmm. it dense like that yeah uh and to me it can like hold more cheesy flavor that way but that said if you're somebody who loves a creamy mac and cheese to me there's so many different styles of mac and cheese from stovetop to baked top it with the breadcrumb whatever you want Mm -hmm. um do an egg eggy macaroni pie you know, Sounds so good. you're not wrong. She's not wrong. Neither of you have reason to hate each other. I don't think they and hate so- each no, other. No, it sounds like this relationship's no, no, no. over. No, I, Josh, that's what I'm reading. Stop it's, this it. is irreconcilable. It, it's and totally consilable. There's life after relationships. It is, I mean, consi- you... it is con- consolable? Consilable? I think reconcilable. It is It is reconcilable. <laughs> you can reconcilabilitate it. I think love is great, and macaroni and cheese should not be the reason why you guys are having a little riff. I don't think it... We should be relationship counselors. I am one. Yeah, fair. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not. Please don't sue me. (laughs) Okay, that was unexpected. Uh, (laughs) Hey, this is Charity, and I get made fun of all the time in my friend group, but Reese cups and pepperoni. Reese cups. Take a Reese cup, put a pepperoni on top, put a pepperoni on the bottom, eat it in one bite. Reese cups. Fantastic. Um, Salty and sweet. And also, peanut butter and bologna. Okay. Yeah, that's the same. pattern. Salty sweet, super great. Um, I think more people should do this combo and not make fun of me for it. So, love you guys. 
Charity, charity, charity. I'm not making fun of you for it. I think this is you and you alone. This is your thing. I think this is your thing and if people are going to make fun of you for it. You say, hey, this is my thing. And if you don't like it, close your eyes or turn around. Let's look at the similarities here. Both involve heavily Lunch processed meat? deli meats yeah. and peanut butter. Yeah. Is this distracting you? No, not at all. It actually really comforts me. It's like a fidget spinner. And Yeah, um, that's why I do it. <laughs> I think you need to get a full diagnostic panel from your doctor to figure out if you have like a nitrate deficiency. <laughs> Or like a monounsaturated fat, like your hormone levels because you have too low fat of a diet. Like I think there's something, your, your body is telling you, your body, it, like memento, he has all the messages written on him. Your body has all the messages written on it in your cravings. Interesting. And I'm wondering what is causing this. Um, Maybe it's just yummy for her. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, it's probably yummy for you. Yeah. Also, I, I do think like pepperoni and pineapple is a better combination on pizza than ham or bacon and pineapple. Yeah. I think. We got so far in the rabbit hole. I don't think the... she said anything about pe- about pineapple, though. No, no, she didn't. But I'm saying pepperoni <laughs> with sweet things. Pepperoni with sweet things. Because a lot of people, candied bacon is a thing. Sure. We went through the, like, epic bacon moment. Yeah. You know what I mean? In society. But pepperoni, to me, pairs better with sweeter things. I think uh-huh. it's saltier than bacon. It's spicier. It's more piquant. Sure. I do like, like sweet things with pepperoni really work. Honey on pepperoni I is fantastic. It. Yeah. Why not peanut butter? Why not chocolate? I the suppose. bologna's a little off-putting. We need to talk about, yeah, the bologna doesn't have yeah. quite that... You know, um, but also I reckon you're from the South there, um, dated a girl whose family's from Louisville, Kentucky, and they turned me on to the mayonnaise and peanut butter sandwiches. Mm. And so, like, listen, I'm down with the South's use of peanut butter. You know, it's a Southern product at its core. Shout out George Washington Carver. Thanks. Um, (laughs) Yeah, thanks for all your contributions to society. What I'm most interested by is your pronunciation of Reese's. Reese cups. And I know that's a regional derivation. It It was a man named Reese, and he has a peanut butter cup. That is Reese's, Reese's peanut, peanut butter, butter cup. cup. Where Reese cup came from, because Link says the same thing. Oh, really? Link says Reese cups. I did not know that. And, and Link loves himself some Reese cups. I had no idea. And to me, it's one of the most fascinating regionalisms okay. um, that's out there. It's that and then the Philadelphia way of pronouncing water. How do they say it in Philly? They say water. Water? Like you water? had a cup of Rita's water ice. They I made a glass a, of water. I got a cup of Rita's water ice. Yeah. With a Reese cup. <laughs> Also, uh, when I was in South Africa, I don't know if you know this one in South Africa. That yes, was one of the Josh. words that we would ask for water. That's we pronounce water real dumb in America. Water. Give me some water. 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 We would have to start pronouncing it like, hey, can I please get a glass of water? Water. You would have to sense. start saying that because they wouldn't understand water. Water bottle. Water. Water, water bottle. bottle. I have a water bottle. Water bottle. Like I'm from Essex, you got a water bottle out water there. Water bottle. <laughs> Thanks, love. All right. <laughs> there needs to be more savory yogurt options. Oh, hello. I'm tired of having a sweet yogurt be a snack. I yeah. want something sweet, savory. Yeah. Smart. Okay, yeah. Is I'm, that all? I'm all about this. I love the spoonful of yogurt. How many other cultures eat sweet yogurt? I don't know. Like like in, in uh, Persian food, is there a lot of like, sweet yogurt? No. That you eat, like, would you just, like, put fruit and yogurt together? No. Right? We put, like, mint. Yeah, that's, like, yeah. it. But, like, mint's not sweet. Like, it mint and smells shallots. sweet and it can, yeah. Yeah, no, typically we Bro, don't. Bro, musier? Yeah, it's the the hell out of here. It's my favorite. Yeah, I would say that um, you don't need to have sweet yogurt. Just buy a tub of regular plain yogurt, regular plain Greek or regular Bulgarian yogurt, one of my favorite yogurts, and just do that. But that's Mans what? doesn't want to do his own. Mans wants... To have a like the Yo Play has Boston cream pie, key oh, lime no, pie flavor, peaches at the bottom. No, no, no. Peaches at the bottom. No, 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 no. I don't think you're gonna get that. We knew, but what what would you what would your like initial line be of savory flavored yogurts? I don't want to do that as a butternut business. squash and sage. I don't want to do it as a business. Zatar and olive oil. I think I think whoever sent in this opinion, you can create it and you can sell it to Walmart. And you can make millions of dollars. Roasted tomato and basil. Great. Yeah, he should do that. So much. He should do that. You can't do so Start much. Start your savory. I'll, savory gogurt so you can eat it on the go. I want to eat it in the gym. No savory gogurt. I want to be slurping but down. But savory yogurt like in, a, in like in a yo play container, I totally support. And you should make it happen. Make your own dreams come true. No one's going to make your dreams come true for you. Nobody. We should start like an alpha, alpha male grind set podcast. I, I, alpha to be male? a high value man, but then yeah, you also come in and be like, yeah, high value man. Or really, blah, blah, blah. I don't sound like that. Yeah, but you have to. I, I don't sound, sound like that. Like that. Okay, if you want to be a high value woman, you have to wear high heels twenty four seven, even in bed. Just, just wear them. Your feet will get used to it. Is that good? <laughs> That's pretty good. Thank yeah, you. yeah. <laughs> 
Yo, hello, Josh. Hi, Nicole. Uh, I'm Marwan. I'm from Iraq. Uh, <gasps> what I would love to see you guys try the Iraqi cuisine one day. Okay. Um, I know Josh has a strong background about Middle Eastern food. And also, uh, Nicole is from Iran, so Iraqi food is quite close to the Iranian food. So yes, it is. I would love to see you try it, guys, or at least Aww. speak about it and see what you think. Much love, lads. Have a good one. Let's do it. Much love, Habibi. Um, my favorite <laughs> Iraqi dish I have ever had. It is called, I believe, kube halibi or something like that. Yeah, but yeah, it's yeah. a style of kube, which is like I believe a, 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 a dumpling, pocket? like a, a minced meat dumpling. Okay. But it was um our when I was in Israel, it was our Iraqi bus driver's wife literally just like made him lunch and it was nice. like a soup that was tinged red with beets mm -hmm. and then had this like minced meat dumpling almost like I'd call it a kreplach from the Ashkenazi perspective sure. um, and <clears throat> this guy just knew I was super interested in food because I was just asking every single person what they ate how it was made all that and so he just like shared a little bit of his lunch that his wife made for him sweet um, and it was just such a spectacular dish and I think we get in America so much of the Middle Eastern food that we get it's just it's a mishmash. It's, it's kebab. It's yeah, yeah. It's a mishmash. It's people who are trying to play to the lowest common denominator to sell food, right? Yeah. They're selling shawarma. You they're have selling to. kebab. Yeah, 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 you have to. Of course, it's the same with Chinese food and Mexican food. A lot of the times, yeah, sure. And so we miss out on a lot of these really incredible, very regional, personal, home cooked style foods from so many Middle Eastern countries, it's very and true. you lose a lot of those identities when you come into America because we favor the melting pot over here. Yeah, right? we do. You know, so I would I would love to uh, to travel to I Iraq. I would love and... to try Iraqi food. I'm sure there's tons of restaurants here. We just need to go find them. Yo, are any Iraqis in LA want to have us over to dinner? Please, that'd be really rad. Oh I'd my gosh, to. that would be my dream. <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually, my old bosses are Iraqi. Yeah? Yeah. Hit them up. Do you want to meet them? Yeah, can we, can we just go over? I don't know how it would feel if my old boss met my new boss. Mm. Whatever. Like two alphas, you Noel, know, like two rams, button horns. Listen, horn, okay, wait. <laughs> Noel and Wasim, if you're watching this or listening to this podcast, we're going to come over for Iraqi food. Hell yeah. Wasim's half Jordanian. Hey, very yeah, yeah, Again, yeah. intersectionality. <laughs> I think the dish I had was actually like uh, um, Kurdish Iraqi. I think. Oh, maybe. I think he was Kurdish ethnically. Maybe. And anyway, anyways, point is. The world of food is vast and numerous out there they and call. beautiful and it brings people together, but also divides us in many ways. Thank you so much for listening <laughs> is to this Hot Dog is a Sandwich up at nine. We will be playing in... <laughs> Never mind. I, was I, can't, I can't keep that up. It's too very silly. I love NPR. Shout out. And on that note, thank you for listening to a Hot Dog is a Sandwich. We got new audio only episodes every Wednesday and a video version over on YouTube every Friday. If you want to be featured on opinions or like casseroles, you can hit us up at 833 dogpod one The number again is 833-DOG-POD-1. Uh, for more Mythical Kitchen, check us out on YouTube where we launch new videos every week. We'll see you next time. Bye.